let's all come on stage. Sandy. Guys. Round of applause. Guys. Ah. <laughs> 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 all right. Um, Zandile Zondi. Yeah, well, sir. Director of and founder of Zanati Solutions. Correct. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for... Am I audible? Yes. I am. Uh, yes. Thank you. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to the session. Okay. Uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Go for it. Go for it. I can <laughs> see you can't wait. Go for it. No, I wanted to add on to yes. say, um, director and founder of Zanati Solutions. It's a facilities management company. And um, director and partner mm -hmm. at Chapari Group, but I'll share more on Oh, as well. okay. <laughs> All right, let's go back, right? <laughs> where you come from, where you grew up, you know, um, and then we delve into how did you start the business? Okay, awesome. Okay, so I'm Zandi Lezandi, born and bred in the streets of Soweto. Mm -hmm. um, married, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, and a businesswoman. Nice. And um, I've worked um, in the sales of, I mean, in the space of sales. So that's where my entrepreneurial journey began. Huh. Okay. So, selling what? Okay. Selling services. Hmm? Okay. So I worked for, um, I remember the first time when I joined this company, it was a cleaning services company. And um, very small company. And I had to come up with, come up with, uh, what do I say? I had to build something, right? Because the space was, they were cleaning flats that time, right? So when I, when I came and I joined the team, I had to expand the business and I went and I introduced the company into the corporate world, yeah? And then I started my journey there and um, I remember there was only one computer in that office. Mm. <laughs> it was one computer, it was the lady at finance, one lady at sales, um, a few guys in operations and um, my employer, the owner of the business. Mm -hmm. Fine, it was cold calling then. Like knocking from door to door, and yeah, we did that. And I went out, did my research. Um, what is going on? What are other cleaning businesses doing, and all of that? How can we expand? Mm -hmm. I started the pest control division. Mm -hmm. um, got all the compliances and everything because I did my research. I went and started the business to understand what are the requirements, mm -hmm. and then because I was earning on commission. And I love money. <laughs> <laughs> Me loving money because I had to earn. Um, my salary, I think, at that time when I started working was like, sure. Yes. <laughs> it was very, it was very minimal, but it was enough then. Yeah. But then I had to build. In less than four months, um, I had doubled that because I got the business to be registered on... Um, it was Yellow Pages then. Wow. I thought you were going to say CSD. Yellow Pages. <laughs> yellow wow. Pages. We have not gotten to CSD okay. and all of those okay. um, things. Fine. The company grew, right? I'm the face of the business um, that time. My colleagues, the other ladies, they left. They started their own company and all of that. <laughs> because obviously when you're in sales, you, you, you basically, you are running the show. In a way, even though you have to report to somebody else. But my advantage was that uh, being in sales and I would also be involved in operations. And um, I, I got to understand um, all aspects of the business. Of the business yeah. yeah. So is it true that salespeople talk a lot? Okay. Just, I'm just curious. <laughs> but you need to enjoy it all. Like, no, we, we, we can talk the whole day. I mean, we, we, we sell. Okay. We sell. So I, I, I think my, it's, it's a passion. Yeah. You have to, to, to. 
How do you, I mean, just on the topic of sales, how do you deal with rejection? I mean, somebody, you know, uh, how did you deal with it at the beginning? Was it and personal? How and, no. and, and how have you evolved with dealing with rejection? At first, um, it, it, at first I felt like, what is wrong with me? What is it that I'm not doing right? Mm. Um, it, uh, how so do it I need personal. to? It, it was personal at first, mm. and then as I grew in the space of sales, I learned that no, it's not um, a, it's not a rejection. That proposal that I've put in, um, there's something that I didn't do right mm. that I could have done better. So the next one, when I do it. Um, it had better be better than the previous one. So that's how I grew from that to say my skills, my set of skills in, in, in terms of selling, they need to be... So we had to come up with um, be different from your competition because imagine how many facilities management companies are out there. Yeah. I mean, tell me a story where you were rejected and, and it pained, like it stung. I thought I had this one. I thought I had this one in the bag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, um, what do they call it? Shortlisting, right? You get shortlisted, three top best uh, companies, and then um, final presentation. And I thought this one, I had bagged it. And only to learn, um, no, you didn't get it. Um, it was... How did you learn? How did you okay, find out? Because you get better? feedback to say okay. that um, this thing has been awarded to your competitor. All right. How? How do you get feedback? Call, email? Email. All right. Email to say that um, whatever you were bidding on yeah. has been awarded to, to your competition. Yeah. And I, I, I felt like... Before, we... before, as you were opening the email, what was going through? I thought it was mine. Ah. But then, because it didn't say letter of award, oh. <laughs> so <laughs> I did you have it, champagne? It, it was <laughs> ready, not yet. No, not yet, not yet. We 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 wait until we have um, a letter of award. Yes. We 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 don't. Um, okay. We, we don't assume and and say you know as we've got it. Um, we wait until it's confirmed a hundred percent and there's no turning back okay. and everything is signed and sealed and then champagne to so celebrate. There's no, there's no congratulations you're awarded. Then what happens? I mean, you see that this has gone to someone else. I'm a very emotional being. Um... <laughs> and so was, you cried? I, I cry a lot. Um, but yeah, not... <laughs> okay, we're not going to ask you to cry here, but yeah. <laughs> not, not like that, but um, it was painful because it was something that... Um, it was something that I was looking forward to and um, it was going to make a huge difference. You know you know what I mean. I mean, mm -hmm. salespeople mm -hmm. and... So yeah, it was... It was but then we... We have to, to move. So how did you recover? So for me and my team, we had to go back to the drawing board and say, what is it that the competition has that we don't have? Huh. Right. Um, that time, I think that's when we introduced or they introduced um, quality. Quality, okay. I saw. I saw I systems in place and all of those things, very important. I think the previous speaker mentioned that. So for a small business as well, that um, also assisted. And I took that with me on my journey that I'm currently on okay. um, as an entrepreneur. Yeah. All right. So let's move forward. You left the company, I suppose, at some point? Yes, I did. I grew. Um, okay. <laughs> I grew with the company to a point. I reached the ceiling. And then when I reached the ceiling... Um, a very humble, kind man, which I'm sure most of uh, us know, uh, oh, Dr. Mike Nguna, um, my father. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm the adopted daughter. Yes. Um, he identified um, talent in me 
and um, he asked me to join um, join up with his um, other kids and 25% um, shareholding in the company and um, yeah um, equal shareholding and all of that um, to run an internal business that was so that's how my entrepreneurial journey began. Mm. All right. So take us, you know, deeper into what are some of the mistakes? Because before here, you were saying there are so many mistakes. Right. So let's start with the first one. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, there has been too many mistakes because remember, um, even when I was identified as talent, um, find the journey ran. Um, I think um, the... The first speaker mentioned something about partnerships. You know, mm -hmm. when you go into a partnership, you need to, it, it needs to be clear who is responsible for what, mm. right? As long as that is not done, mm. you are going to be sitting and crying and you'll be stressed and mm. it's not going to help. I'm not going to, I'm going to speak about, um, you said a blunder, right? Yes. Mistake, a mistake, an error um, in judgment, right? Okay, I'll speak about the most recent one, even though there is a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, sometime I'm, last I'm year, I'm looking for that blunder that made you reassess, you know, sort of almost put you on your knees to sort of say, um, this is not working, I can't do this, I can't do this you yeah. know, um, yeah, that one that made you reflect and okay i'll speak about my food business my meat uh, business so we also have a business me and my partner partner husband partner um we have a farm cattle farm so farm um livestock vegetables and stuff so we decided to expand on the farm open the butchery right um, Zandi, because, you know, Zandi thinks she's a salesperson, you know, she's, she's ripe, she can make things happen and all of that. Um, we're looking for a location, um, search for a location, uh, because now we've decided, um, how's about we expand the food chain because we are busy selling to, to this, um, other butchery owners and they're buying at prices that are not pleasing so fine um quickly zandi sees one location we this is where we are going to open our butchery our oh. first butchery yeah. a partner says no 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 we have not done a study due, due diligence due diligence you know feasibility is this uh, area what is and 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 Zandi says, no, this is it. This right. one is the one. My feelings are I can saying feel this one. It. The, my gut. <laughs> this is the place. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to be here. I'm going to hold your hand as your business partner and your husband. Fine. We go check, check, agree, everything, build cold rooms, put, put equipment, everything. So this is up. like from ground up, you're building. Yeah, All building. right. All right. We've got our cows, so I mean, what's the issue? Let's set up. Yes. Sharp. Um, fine. We promote posters, everything, put it everywhere. We, right? Um, it's it's Chapare Meets. Uh, for those of you that are on social media, you can check it out on Instagrams uh. Uh, and Facebook. Um, we set up, we launch, cited my first shop, right? Um, Where is this? It's in Lombardy. Okay. I I'm coming to the blunder. No, no, I'm just trying to <laughs> see where the place is. It's in Lombardy. Yes. Okay. Um, set up, we run, we run operations for a year. Um, year two, business is not, it's no longer happening. Like, it's no longer, it, we are just breaking even Right? Hmm. We sit down because he has a financial background. So he's my finance guy. Um, chap, we sit down. He says, can you see? This thing is not 
where it should be. Look at the projections, look at whatever and all of that. I'm like, no, we can make it work. We just need to market it some more. We need to, you know. Yeah. As a salesperson, your solution is I, 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 I always believe, you know, um, and you must never give up. Yeah. So fine, um, I come up with a plan. How's about um, we... Fine. It's it's slow. This one. Why is it slow? The space is small. We get customers, and it just it gets packed, right? Mm -hmm. Let's find another venue so that we can accommodate um, these customers that we are getting that want to chill and and um, you know bry the meat and all mm -hmm. of that because it was a butchery slash chisanyama, but because the space wasn't allowing, right? You know, Zanti was she. Yeah. It's fine. We're looking for a place. Um, busy checking every time, uh, property, whatever. Find another location in Lombardy. Lombardy, it's close to Alex. Yeah, it's not a bad place. I mean, it's fine. I mean, it's going to work because, you know, people, they love meat and they're going to check the place. It's got a car wash. It's, it's big. It's, um, it's open and, and we can do that. Um, it doesn't need to be a butchery, but it's going to be more food. And uh, people can chill and then the Kawash go negotiate um, with the landlord. Uh, it was vacant. Uh, the previous people left and that. You set up shop. Set up shop, number two. Mm. <laughs> number one is dying. <laughs> so, mm. Mm. Suffering. Fine. Okay, fine. We're going to use that one as a... Because um, that's where we cut the meat and yeah. it's got the fridges and everything. Yes. We open shop number two. Number one is suffering. Mm. Okay, um, it's happening, it's busy, very busy, gets packed, you know, on weekends. Shop number two. Shop number two. Yeah. Mondays, you no, know, we're promoting, um, we're not Mohodu Monday <laughs> as we are Goat Monday. Ah, okay? goat excuse Monday me, okay. We should not be like everybody you else. We are being different. We are being different okay. and unique. We need to, because everybody is going to um, Mohodu Monday. I'm not taking up your time, no, 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 keeper, no, no, no. no. Um, cool. Set up shop, everything is happening, it's vibing. Um, number one is suffering. Close number one, right? Okay. Um, one year, six months. Close number one because now it's we are going to be, we can't be servicing um, the other... Close number one, number two if, is is happening. It's pumping. It's mm. it's happening. But two thousand, but it's vibing. It's vibing. Yes, yes. it's vibing. Yeah. <laughs> number two is vibing. Um, fine. We're in the process of getting a liquor license, um, so that we can accommodate you know those people that want to come yes. and drink and whatever. And then we are building this business. Um, a landlord comes now. Because he can see that we are making money. Mm. Then it comes now, um, the terms of the lease agreement, they are changing. Okay, um, why? Now, no, the rental is going up because now I want to develop, I want to do this and that. Okay, fine, it's, it's not much of a problem because fine, this adjustment is about five not bad, we really. still, um, my smart partner says, uh, this thing is not going to last, right? Gives me examples of places that have been vibing and then, you know, you get to a point where they don't vibe anymore and you need to like evolve, you need to change. And when you change, you need to completely change and make the customers also adjust and adapt to the new change. Blanda, number one, number two. In less than two years. So, sh shop number two, the rent is going up. The rent is going up. Okay. Which eats into your margins, right? Correct. But the place is vibing, is it? The place is vibing. Yeah. So, can't, are you not making enough profits? But for how long? Ah, oh, okay. Okay. 
for how long? The terms and conditions are changing because now um, landlord is seeing that, no, they're making money. Now landlord says, I'm going to be, he gives us notice to say he's going to be doing some renovations, additions to this and that, and then this is what is going to be the new rental um, six months from now. Mm. Okay. Okay, uh, partner, what do we do? Do we stay and carry on? Um, my partner is like, no, we are not doing this. Let the term come to an end and let's be looking for another location. But I told you that this kind of business is not going to work. Okay. Term comes to an end. Term comes to an end. Close shop. Still looking for a place, right? Still looking for a place. Everything closes. Everything is at storage now, right? Zandi being the salesperson that she is because she doesn't give up. Zandi is now catering for corporate events. Okay. Um, she, she, she does orders for people that have functions and, and, and all of that. And the shops are now closed. So last day, you closed shop. You are there, I'm assuming. Yes. <laughs> so how does it feel like? It's, I mean, this is like the end of it. It's, um, okay, for me, it's not the end of it because it's like, okay, I am from this, I'm going to open up something that is better. And now the idea is own the land. Mm. whatever you want to do, like business in, in that space of entertainment, um, a butchery, a food outlet and whatever, own the land. Mm. Own the land. No one is going to come back to you with changed terms and conditions of this and that. But doesn't it depend on signing a long-term you know, type of an agreement? Or, you know, that can also be changed. I think the, we didn't read too much into um, the agreement yeah. because Zandi was excited. And Zandi, when she wants something, mm. she, wants it, she wants it done. She, yeah. So I'm learning from that to say, you know what, before you get carried away and think where now you can work magic, you need to sit down and read through the fine print and understand um, the terms and conditions and all mm. of that. Okay, so it's two shops down. Closed, yeah. First shop, what was the mistake then? The rushed decision. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, rushed decision because one didn't sit down and, and do a study of, is this going to work? Mm and understand the market in that uh, specific location. So when you move to shop number two, did you do a same mistake post mortem of shop number one? Or it was just it was we fall we bona, fall, we go forward. Bona. Let's do this because fine, this one is suffering, but now here we are going to work magic because there's enough space and people are comfortable and yeah. yeah. So the partnership between yourself and your husband, clearly you guys able to equalize each other. Correct. Because you are the dreamy one mm -hmm. and he's the realistic one. Very much so. Right. How do you guys navigate? I'm right. Trust me. Uh, versus, uh, maybe you are right, let me hold back. How does that work between yourself and your partner? Okay, so I think he allows me, he allows me to do what I think is right, and when I... <laughs> <laughs> and then you burn your fingers. <laughs> and then I burn my fingers, and then he says... Hmm. Told you so. I I, are you that stubborn that you wouldn't listen when it says this is I not going to work? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'm stubborn. Well, entrepreneurs are stubborn, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. 
I, I, I always believe, um, I think it's because... Um, Entrepreneurial. That's, 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 I'm, I'm very entrepreneurial. And that, yeah. that's why you find that um, we, we have a, a number of businesses that yeah. we're involved in yeah. to say that, okay, fine, with the farm and everything, we know that's a lifetime. Yeah. It's, it's an investment for a lifetime. It's long term. But then for these short term um, projects and all of that, I always believe that we can make it work. How much, more or less, give or take, have you guys lost in this tutorial? If you were to estimate. Can I just say a lot? Because the equipment um, mm. that was invested in, in, in setting up and... Um, but if you look at it, mm. the money that was made, I mean, money was made. Mm. So I would not say, but... Yeah. Yes, there has been um, a loss. Because obviously one had hoped that by now it should still be, I mean, from here we should be going to my place, guys. Yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, that's not the case. So I always say guys who go into business with their partners are very brave. Because if you have a disagreement at work, it doesn't end at work. As a guy, you get home, it follows you. I didn't like how you looked at CD. What's happening? It gets at home, right? You have a disagreement at home. You didn't put this toilet seat down. Da, 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 da. It goes with you to work, right? So how did this blunder affect your marriage, if it did? Um, and how do you guys navigate this? Because it's never time off. It's never... We are at home, we don't talk about work. We are at work, we don't talk about home. It's always, the line is very thin. So how has this affected? So I think we have, over the years uh, that we've been together, we have learned to separate um, work from home. Mm -hmm. So once you knock off, we get home, <laughs> we don't talk about work. That's that's how um, we... But has it always been like this? Or at the beginning it was, you know, the line was so thin that you can't separate? Um, I think the pressures from, from the business, at first, we, 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 we learned to say, you know what, we'll end up, uh, this marriage is not going to work because if the other marriage there of the business is yeah. not working and then at home, we bring it here as well, then it's not going to work. So we, 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 we then said, we came to an agreement and said, once we have knocked off, we don't talk shop. Okay. Before we came to that agreement, yeah. what happened? It was um, quite difficult, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy because now it would be, um, we would be, would feel like we're still at work. Mm. And then, obviously, fine, our issues, we never, like, would uh, bring them to work. So it felt like we were working all the time. Mm. So we then sat down and said, you know what, uh, my, my guy. Before this... you sat down, what happened? <laughs> what drove to, we need to, we need to talk. <laughs> what drove to, we need to talk. Something is not working here. And if we proceed this way. It's going to lead. It's going to lead to something. There has to be something. I mean, entrepreneurs are sitting here. They are in partnership with their Why? business partnership with their partners, or they want to get into partnership with their partners. How horrible does it get? Paint the picture for us. Sure, it's um, okay, guys. I'm going to be honest, right? That's what we are looking <laughs> for. We are here for that. It. it... As long as you have not drawn that line, yeah. it, it won't work. So you have to draw the line to say, I'm going to be partners with my life partner yeah. in business and make the conditions clear to say that this is how we're going to work. Otherwise, we would not um, be together. Um, yeah. yeah, me and my husband. Now. For, ex for example... Just one instance. <laughs> Just give us one instance of how, how it's like. 
Sure. I, I think um, those of you that are in <laughs> partnerships with yeah. your, your, your life partners, I mean, in business with your life partners, yeah. have experienced this at some point. Um, okay. Do I have to? Yes, be? please. <laughs> Let's be practical about this. Not theoretical. Let's be practical. It would, um, I'm, I'm just going to say like how it would affect, um, it would get to a point where we're not talking mm. because of a disagreement um, um, at work. At work mm. And that is not healthy mm. for, for, for Nteo, yeah. Yeah. For, for, for our yeah, relationship, yeah. for our marriage and for the kids as well yeah. because that's how it tends and i understand because it's money it's money that's being lost and um yeah but yeah for those of you that want to get into business with your partners make it clear okay then how did you guys decide that this is not gonna work i mean how did the conversation go so me and my buddy i call him okay <laughs> We, up. <laughs> mm. Mm. we 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 have um we sit down we talk mm. and yeah we 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 sit down and talk we we best friends mm. my husband and i are friends like uh, is so we we sit down and talk about all the you know painful things and whatever mm. difficulties it may be we we do um engage on on saying yeah. you know what this is what is happening and um how do we navigate um, this yeah. situation that yeah. we're faced yeah. with? Yeah. And we, I listen. Now I, I've learned to listen. And it's, um, I'm not, I don't know it all. And yeah, yeah I, I appreciate him for all How meeting. difficult was that? Very difficult because I, 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 I'm an alpha. I can tell. <laughs> It was very difficult. Um, yeah. So I, at some point, I, I I know I need to differentiate from, you know, being my own CEO yeah. in my company and all of that. And when I'm at home, I'm, I'm a mother, I'm, I'm a wife. And I, because most of the advices that I get, I get from him, yeah. basically. And I go and I implement because yeah. he's more experienced than yeah. I am. Wow. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Uh what lessons have you learned? I mean, from the whole experience, if you know, if you were to advise your son or your daughter, you know, what would what would they look out for? What shouldn't they do? Um, they should learn to listen to advices from those people. Mm. People are people that know, people that have been yeah. there yeah. and and done that. So they should yeah. learn to listen. Yeah. And another thing um, that I've learned um, in my journey as well is you will get the best advisors from the least expected places. Um, yeah, and to be humble as, yeah. as, a, as a person. Yeah. Don't be a boss. I always say to my staff, uh, we are colleagues here. Yeah. Um, we we yeah. all... Yeah. yeah, but listening, I think, is a very good uh, skill that I've also learned. Not that I wasn't, li yeah, maybe I wasn't listening, but <laughs> I've learned to listen now. And um, yeah, it's, I mean, entrepreneurs suffer from what we call main character syndrome, right? You know, we suffer from, I'm the steering in this thing, I'm building this thing, I'm the vision bearer, and I know what I want. You guys don't get it. So this is what I want. And to come and come down and listen, it's such a hard thing. But but yeah, um, listening is a skill, and it's it's a skill that can be developed. Right. Indeed. Awesome. Can we give her a round of applause? Thank you so much. <laughs>